When the judges are with the cars, they go into every fine detail. They want to hear the engine. They want to see the lights work. They want to hear the horn. This is our 1956 Maserati A6G 2000 Alamano. Surprisingly enough, there's a lot of positive feedback. I've heard a couple people say this is the only car they came here to look at. I'm with the Avora GTE road car concept. This GTE road car concept is us asking the question, what if we made the race car street legal? What would that be like? Let's take a look at the all-new 2012 650 iCoupe. A really neat feature is that rear-view camera is standard. In order to keep a really clean-looking line in the back of the vehicle, it's been integrated into the rondelle. So when the vehicle is put in reverse, this pops out. We're here at Pebble Beach on the concept car lawn with the Jaguar 675. It's a hybrid supercar that will be the fastest hybrid car in the world when it comes to the market. Welcome to the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. I'm Nick Waller. I work with the Concours. I've been coming here for nine years now. It's really the highlight of my year. I work on the selection committee. Before the Concours happens on Thursday, we have the Tour d'Elegance, which is open to all of the entrants, and we encourage the entrants to bring their car on the tour, which starts at 8.30 in the morning. That's a real buzz time for me personally, because we experience what the cars were designed to do, which is to drive. The main feature part this year is Mercedes-Benz, who are celebrating 125 years of the automobile. They built the first car in 1896. Fabulous machine. And we have one of those here, a replica that was built in England. Very simple tricycle, if you like, with a single cylinder engine. And of course, the history of Mercedes-Benz, it goes forward and forward and forward, culminating with the Gullwing. We have six classes of Mercedes-Benz, including a preservation class of unrestored cars. Pebble Beach is all about judging too, and we're lucky enough to have judges from, again, all around the world, who are the very experts in each mark and each era. It's the owners who really present the cars to the judges. When the judges are with the cars, they go into every fine detail. They want to hear the engine. They want to see the lights work. They want to hear the horn. Their knowledge goes way back. They also know exactly what a car should have been like when it was first built. And we really encourage, when they restore a car, to restore it to the state that it came out of the factory. Not to overdo it, not too much chrome. Not chrome something where it shouldn't be chrome. Leave it as brass, leave it as bare metal if necessary, or paint it if it should have been. The temptation, of course, is to see a shiny piece of metal and to put a little chrome on because it will add a little pizzazz. But we don't like that. That doesn't do you any good. So what you're seeing on the field today are cars exactly as they were when they were first built. To win Best of Show at Pebble Beach is to win the Oscar for Best Film, Best Performance, Best Everything. The awards ceremony this afternoon is the culmination of the day. The judges have done their stuff. They've made their judgments. We now know who's come first, who's come second, who's come third in class. We put on, I think, one of the finest car shows for people in the afternoon. They come across our ramp. It's a real honor to be part of the winning crowd. It's really an emotional moment for everybody involved, and we love it. We come back, and we really look forward to every year and hopefully it'll be better next year and the next year and the next year and we'll keep going. 61 years this year, I might not be around for the next 60 but somebody will be and they'll have a great time. Closed captioning. Welcome to Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. I'm Matthew Siegel, this is my family's car. 
We're from San Diego, California. This is a 1956 Maserati A6G2000 with bodywork by Alamano. We purchased the car in 2007 from auction in London at RM. We spent two years contemplating what to do with the car. It had some issues. There was things that weren't original, weren't correct. We eventually decided that it was the right thing to do to restore it back to its original condition, original color, bring it back to what it should have been. My father and I took apart the car last summer, stripped it down part by part. The car then went to Symbolic Motors in Sorrento Valley, San Diego. <laughs> and for the past year, they've been working yeah. on it. Started by tearing off all the paint, discovering what was there, what wasn't there, finding the original paint color. Now we're at Pebble Beach. This car in particular, there's a variety of body styles in this car and different coach work people. There's this Gato, which is apparently 600 pounds lighter than this car, which I can't imagine because there's not that much of this car. But back in 1957, Motor Trend said this is the best car of that year. And Sterling Moss, an important racing driver, said the same thing. This car has the lesser carburetors, the Weber DCO4s, which aren't as free-flowing as the other twin Webers, but it should have somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 160 horsepower, easily top out over 120 miles an hour. It's a rare design. It's one of 21. Not many people will have this car, and a lot of them are pretty poorly restored, as ours was before we got it. Surprisingly enough, there's a lot of positive feedback. I've heard a couple of people say this is the only car they came here to look at, which uh, I'm, I'm still in shock of because there's much more valuable cars here. There's $25 million Ferraris in a lot of them, and there's some much larger cars that have a lot more detailing in this car. I think it triggers a lot of people's excitement. This is our 1956 Maserati A6G 2000 Alamano. It's a two-liter engine. DO4 carburetors, which is kind of rare. The interior was restored back to build sheets red. The square weave carpet is the closest thing we could find to the original carpet. It has this kind of peppery look to it. There's wire here along the dashboard that holds that in place. All the detailing has been redone and finalized. The seat actually comes down in the back here. It's kind of cool, a little detail that not many people know about. So you can actually slide things all the way through. Here's our original toolkit in the truck and all of our documentation. Spare tire, these actually flap open on either side. Fuel pumps on the right and the left side is where the tools would lie inside. And that's our 1956 Maserati A6G Alamano. Kevin Smith, and I'm the marketing and PR communications executive for Lotus Cars USA. We're at the automotive mecca that is Pebble Beach Concord Elegance each year. This is the place to be for any enthusiast. I'm with the Avora GTE road car concept. Lotus launched the Avora streetcar initially in the U.S. market, the naturally aspirated Avora. We've more recently launched the Avora S, the supercharged Avora. And we also have racing versions of the Avora that are racing very successfully in several series around the globe. One of which, the highest spec of which, is the Avora GTE race car. It raced at Le Mans. One of our cars finished sixth in class at Le Mans. So this GTE road car concept is us asking the question, what if we made the race car street legal? What would that be like? And that's what we have here in concept form, and we'd like to take this to production. A lot of the components on this car are from the race car. Anything that's from the race car that we could legally take to the street pretty much are on this concept car. So a lot of carbon fiber body panels in this. The chassis is very much like the road car is now because it's such an exceptional chassis to begin with. A lot of the race car's chassis components are directly from the road car because it's that good. The engine has some of the components from the race engine. Now the race engine in the GTE race car is a 4 liter V6 engine naturally acid. What we've done here is we've kept it at 3.5 liters like our road cars. We've used some of the components, some of the internal components from the race engine to strengthen it, to beef it up a little bit because this is supercharged like the Avora S supercharged car, but this one's putting out more boost pressure. So the engine needed to be beefed up to live with that pressure. This is 420 horsepower. This appeals to driving enthusiasts that really want a pure, precise, communicative drive experience. You don't drive a car like this. You connect with it and connect with the road and just go have a blast. This is obviously, to look at it, a, a much more expressive version of our existing Avora that's in the marketplace now. And if you look at the face of the car compared with the existing Avora, it's got a much more aggressive look to it. 
wider central opening, wider side openings as well. Nice carbon fiber splitter in the front. Very aggressive face to it. A car with more performance ought to have more aggression on the road. It ought to have that right attitude. We've got also the carbon fiber vents here in place of the screens that are on a standard Evora road car right now. These are from the GTE race car and they've got a wider track in the front as well. So there's some broader fenders here on both sides, wider track front and rear. All carbon fiber roof, carbon fiber A pillars, carbon fiber scoops over the air inlets on both sides, and right on back to this carbon fiber wing at the back. The engine cover is much the same as the existing road cars for the Evora, but we have a carbon fiber engine cover as well. And if I'm to pop this off to give you a closer look at the engine, you can see this is a supercharged three and a half liter V6 engine, about 420 horsepower this would have if we bring it into production. Even the interior is very much inspired by the race car, very minimalist, very lightweight. We've taken about 300 pounds out of this car relative to the existing Evora S that's in the marketplace now. We're looking at a car that's about 2,850 pounds with approximately 420 horsepower, so it'd be quite an exhilarating performance car. Thanks for taking a look at the Evora GTE road car. Closed captioning provided by... I'd like to welcome you to the Concourse d'Elegance. I'm Alana Bari, I'm the Sixth Series Product Manager for BMW of North America, and we're here at the Concourse de Elegance presenting the all new Sixth Series Coupe, completely redesigned inside and out, a whole new exterior design, as well as a twin turbocharged V8 engine, producing 400 horsepower, 450 pounds foot of torque, takes you from zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. The vehicle comes equipped with a six speed manual or an eight speed sport automatic, and the US is actually the only market that gets the manual transmission, so we're really proud of that. Everything's been redesigned, including the interior, which features 20-way multi-contour Napa seats, as well as a sport steering wheel that's very driver-oriented. Everything's actually angled towards the driver in the vehicle. All of the driver assistance systems are located to the left. We also have new 19-inch wheels that are standard. We have a rear-view camera that pops out of the rondelle when the vehicle's put in reverse, so it keeps a very clean-looking bumper. And the rear-view camera is standard as well as comfort access, which allows you to lock, unlock, and start your engine without taking the key out of your pocket or bag. If you look at BMW in general, a lot of the reasons to purchase the vehicle is fun to drive. As opposed to targeting a specific customer, we look at purchase motivators. What really should a BMW mean and what are our customers looking for? So it's really attracting that emotional attachment to a vehicle that's beautiful as well as really enjoyable. The vehicle's a little stiffer than the outgoing model, so you really feel the change in performance, and that new twin turbocharged engine gives you just a lot more horsepower. It's a great vehicle to drive, and a coupe is especially fun to drive on the roads here in California. Let's take a look at the all-new 2012 650i coupe. If you look at the front of the vehicle, you have a completely redesigned kidney grille. It features an upright position, and this vehicle is equipped with the M Sport package, that's an option, and you can see there's a change to the front air dam intake. Moving up, if you look at the first for any BMW, it's the full LED adaptive headlights with high beam assistance. So what that does, it's adaptive, so it twists and turns on the road based on where you're driving. It follows the steering angle, as well as high beam assistance, which automatically turns on and off your high beams. These are the M Sport package wheels. This is an all-new option. It launches on the coupe. Moving in, take a look at the interior of the vehicle. It features the 10.2-inch flat screen display, as well as a very driver-oriented interior. You see the pushback greenhouse, as well as the Hofmeister kink, which is a signature BMW design. You have full LED continuing into the rear of the vehicle, as well as a fully integrated spoiler along the top. A really neat feature on this vehicle is that rear view camera is standard. In order to keep a really clean looking line in the back of the vehicle, it's been integrated into the rondelle. So when the vehicle is put in reverse, this pops out. And how you know this is a 650 is by looking at the tailpipes. Now again, this comes with the M Sport package, so you have a different bumper and you have the darkened exhaust pipes, but that oblong design shows you that it's a V8. So the V8 is a twin turbocharged 4.4 liter, 400 horsepower engine that gives you zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds.
name is Jonathan Carrier. I am the CX75 brand manager for Jaguar Globally. We're here at Pebble Beach on the concept car lawn with the Jaguar CX75. It's a hybrid supercar that's extremely advanced in terms of its technology and its design. It has two electric motors, one at the front, one at the rear, and a very small four-cylinder gasoline engine that's highly boosted that helps deliver superior performance and will be the fastest hybrid car in the world when it comes to the market. It will achieve 0 to 60 in less than 3 seconds, 0 to 100 miles an hour in less than 6 seconds, and a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. And you get all of that, essentially, of this superior performance, but with fuel economy that's less than a Prius and a range similar to a Chevy Volt. So it means you can drive around in electric mode for around 30 or 40 miles. The engine itself will also act as a range extender, so you can use the fuel and burn the fuel in the engine to charge the batteries. That means you've got a superior electric range if you want to continue driving as an electric car. So really it's about showing that Jaguar's got a very dynamic future. It really sets the benchmark in terms of Jaguar design. People know that Jaguar stands for fantastic, elegant, beautiful and sporty design and you see that in CX-75 but at the same time it shows that Jaguar as a brand of heritage actually has a very strong future in terms of technology, innovation and performance which really is at the core of what it stands for and it's a showcase of what Jaguar can do for tomorrow. The response has been phenomenal because we've shown the car at a couple of locations as you can see from the crowds here at Pebble Beach today. We're gathering a significant amount of interest, people who are wanting to know all about the car, its technology, its innovation and as well as the design. We're establishing a register of interest in the car so those people who want to be able to buy one they can obviously identify themselves to us and then we'll be able to tell them more about the car in the future when we have more technical specifications to release. I think they maybe wouldn't expect a car like this from Jaguar. I think they might expect something with the design, but perhaps the concept and the technology and how it delivers its performance, I think, is very, very unique. Talk a little bit about the design philosophy of CX-75. Clearly you can identify that it's uniquely a Jaguar from the front. As you see from the shape of the grille and also the unique headlights for the car. But it's distinctly a mid-engine supercar. You see the inlets for the engine at the rear. And really the strongest element that you'll see is here at the rear. The unique profile at the back as you reach the rear diffuser. The very functional elements of the aerodynamic design of the car that help deliver the top speed and its performance. Thanks for taking a look at Jaguar CX-75 with us at Pebble Beach here today. Closed captioning provided by...